This week on The Spaceship... Jackson, pull this lever for me. Good. That's working. In the year 2104, a Federation research cruiser was launched into space. Its mission, to seek out new life. Fitted with wall-to-wall -wall monitoring, every moment on board the really invincible three Macclesfield division has been transmitted back to Earth. What you're about to hear took place live a while ago. 70,000 light years from home. At the end of the last series, Captain Gordon Taylor became the first commander in history to lead his crew into a black hole. A few minutes later, they're back. Oh, oh, is, is uh, anyone there? Oh, Karen! Uh, are you, you're all right, Karen. Oh, I'm fine, sir. Oh. That's the spirit. I, I think we've come through in one piece. Oh, we're such a lucky ship, sir. Okay, people. Uh, let's be having you. I hope you get. Oh. I hope you get, Doctor. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. That, so that's what happens when you enter. Just the try block. not to think about it, Clive. If you like, Patterson, come on. Come Don't on. judge me. Okay, okay, okay. Put the gun down. It's, it's only me. Sir. Uh, come on, people. <laughs> Rise and shine. Oh. Jackson, for God's sake, cover yourself up. What the hell was that about? That was disgusting. Right, as your captain, I forbid anyone to talk about what just went on in there. Be thankful we're alive. Uh, a little embarrassed, uh, perhaps, but alive. <clears throat> Clive, stop thinking about it. Oh, oh, sorry, sir. Now, what we all need to do is get busy. We've a ship to run, doesn't there's, there's lots, lots to do. Uh, <clears throat> Any suggestions? You're the captain, sir. Uh, I'll go and check out the ship, sir. I'll see if anything works. Yes, good. Good idea. Good idea, Jackson. Good, good. We need things working. <clears throat> Come on, everyone. Get busy. Do something. Fan out. Episode 1. Hole. Tuesday, the 5th of April. After a thorough examination of the ship, Chief Engineer Stuart Jackson has good and bad news. So, only the toaster works? Yes, sir. Oh, huh. that's, that's, uh, that's great news. I, I love toaster. Uh, no, that's the bad news, sir. The only thing working is the toaster. Well, if that's the bad news, then the good news must be phenomenally good. Shall I take over, sir? Handle this news situation? Yes, it's a good idea, Patterson. I I've got toast to eat. Probably all sort itself out after a uh, good toasty. <laughs> Always remember my tutor at Space Tech. Old Metal Hand Gordy, we called him, on account of his, uh, his metal hand. Insisted on all of us having a good toasty before work. Feed the stomach, feed the mind, he would say. Anyway, the good news So, of is... course, toast killed him in the end. How did toast kill him? Well, a slice was stuck in the toaster. He reaches in with his metal hand. Bang! Mm. Shame. Damn fine tutor. Damn fine toaster. But does anybody want to hear my good news? Oh, go on, Jackson. Make it quick. Well, the ship's buggered, but apparently we are due a free upgrade. Mm. So if I can get the emergency power up and running, we can download the upgrade from HQ and we should be okay. Why didn't you say so? Well, I was trying to... You need to speak up. You're not the new boy anymore. <sighs> We're okay. We've got an upgrade, people. Jackson, sort it all out. Uh, everyone else, toast all round. Mm. All right. The Really Invincible 3, shortly to be the Really Invincible 3.2.8, has been in space now for over seven years. The upgrade is well overdue and the crew celebrate in the revolving canteen with its panoramic views of never-ending blackness. Oh. Now, try that. Oh. oh, great work, Jackson. Thank you. A latte to be proud of. What else can we expect? Well, according to this, a much larger toaster with thick and thin capabilities. Oh. Cooks all sizes, including muffins. Oh, I can't wait to use it. Yeah, we'll each get a laminate toilet seat with a star constellation design. Oh, yes. I can't wait to use it. What about weapons? Uh, yeah. 
One new free-mounted J76 Planet Blaster in red and cream. I can't wait to use it. Yeah, the polite technology on the doors is upgraded to super polite. And the... Uh... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, we're revolving again. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> oh, um... Hold on. No. Hang on to your couch, people. No. This ship is no, well no. and truly back in business. <laughs> With a canteen that revolves at 24 varying speeds, the really invincible 3.2.8 is now one of the most sophisticated in the fleet. Oh, oh, look at this big fat Federation logo and everything. <laughs> Stand back. Captain's mail for the captain of the ship. That's me. Oh, yes. Would you like me to read it, sir? Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> anything I, I need to do? They're giving us a new mission. Bring it on. They want us to go to the planet G Fax. Right. And sort out the call center. The call center? Yes, apparently the service has been really poor lately and they wanted to talk to management and sort it out. Call centre? <clears throat> but we're pioneers, for God's sake. We deal in things like black holes, no, no, not call centres. Is there a difference? The captain's right. This is not in our remit. Our mission statement is very clear. <laughs> Seek out new life and destroy it. Actually, I think it's just to seek it out, not to... You just made up the last bit. I thought it was destroyed. No! Well... Seek out new life, not service issues. Oh, just a minute. There's another bit at the bottom of the letter. Please note your designated remit is now to seek out new life, maybe find the odd planet or two, do bits and bobs, whatever's going really. Oh, OK, people, uh, let's brush the job off as fast as we can, then move on to something more pioneering and epoch-making. <clears throat> Set coordinates for the planet GFAX. Yep. And Karen, send a letter to HQ telling them we've just become the first craft in history to survive a black hole. There could be a fleet commendation in this. Uh, shall I tell them what went on inside the black no, hole? No, 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 no. Just, uh, just say we went in and, and, and came out okay, again. Okay. That should, uh, should make them sit up a bit. Hmm? In recent years, all our call centres have been outsourced to GFAX, a planet 70 million miles from Earth. Here, a friendly, polite and highly intelligent plant-like species has proved the perfect call centre operative. OK, people. Now, uh, they may not be new life, but they're alien. Remember, we represent the human race, and uh, let's make a good impression. <clears throat> Are we all ready? Uh, yeah, yes, of course. So. Prepare to make contact. Thank you for your call. Press 1 for gas supplies, 2 for electricity services, 3 for calls regarding your bank, um, is there any press other number 4 we can ring? to discuss well, the only one phone got. contract, right. Right. Well, 5 are, I guess if you we'll wish just to book hold. an appointment with a doctor, 6 to cancel an appointment with your doctor, 63 to order a takeaway. <sighs> to hear the options again, Press 64. <laughs> to talk to an operator, please hold. <laughs> Let's just bomb the whole bloody planet! Hold firm, everyone. Four hours later, the really invincible is still on hold. Ah, Doctor, you've been missing the excitement. I'm sorry, sir. I've just been putting the finishing touches to my latest rather groundbreaking research, which uh, I've been working on for years, and which will blow the... Yes, never mind the... that. Help us out with this uh, call centre problem. What's the science angle on all this? Uh... It's Lionel Richie, circa 1985. Right, right. Karen, uh, perhaps you can tell us about these call centre operatives? Well, they're called Pendula Verbularis, unlike Earth plants. They've got brains, and they can talk, so they're good on the phone. And because they're rooted in the soil, they don't need toilet breaks, which makes them perfect. Hello? Oh, oh, oh they're here at last. <laughs> Thank you for your call. You're speaking to... Yeah, 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 yeah! How can I help you today? Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, listen, all right. Listen, yes, listen, yes. Listen, just, yeah, this is yeah, Captain yeah, yeah, yeah. Gordon Taylor from the Really Invincible Three, and I, I was hoping to speak uh, to... Point 0.2.8, sir. Point 0.2.8. Point uh, uh, on official Earth Federation business, and I'd like to speak to uh, your manager, please, sir. Uh, I'm afraid he's not available to take your call. Can I help you with anything? Um, well, I don't think that... that actually, th th this is a managerial matter, and, and I, I need to talk to someone in charge. Um, uh, Should I get the guns out, sir? Leave her alone. She's nervous. Listen, Yaya. I... 
She's hung up. Well, you said her name wrong. Well, that's no excuse. They're supposed to be polite. Oh, they're probably really badly paid. I was hoping to in- invite management up to the ship, talk things through in a civilised fashion, but, uh, well, if, if we can't get through, I... I could just beam them up, sir. Quiet, Jackson, I'm thinking... It's just, no, my tractor beam's been upgraded to tractor beam plus. It's got some nifty new features. Oh, what? And is one of them to somehow locate management in all that green foliage down there and bring them up? Yes. It's got an authority scan. It, it can isolate and beam up authority figures. How the hell does it do that? It scans for natural bearing, height, number of pens, size of sexual organs, stuff like that. And, uh, and they wouldn't have a choice? No, it would be compulsory. Perfect. Let's, uh, let's, let's bring them up. Um, right. <clears throat> show them a little human hospitality. Oh, 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 we could have a cheese and wine. Oh. Mix uh, oh, business sorry, with no, pleasure. No, 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 this is a compulsory cheese and wine, particularly important today in the light of the... Um, <clears throat> the black hole experience, to help us re-establish the normal, civilised boundaries of social interaction. My quarters at Ed Sharp. Non-attendance will be punishable by court-martial. Thank you so much for entering me. Against the wishes of Patterson, his second-in-command, Captain Gordon Taylor has decided to bring alien plant life on board the ship. Against the wishes of the whole crew, he's decided to hold a cheese and wine. They are decisions he will grow to regret. It's coming now, sir. Right, insignia straight, everyone. Let's make a good impression. Karen, Karen, I'd like you to take charge of seeing our guests are comfortable. I'm here, sir. Watering can and secateurs at the ready. Oh, I can't wait to meet them. Apparently, when they flower, they've got a heavenly scent. Um, seeing as it's a, a special occasion, can I interest anyone in trying my new aftershave? I developed it myself. Oh. Have a sniff. <laughs> Clive. Tell me this isn't what you've been working on. Yes, I've called it Clive. Your years of groundbreaking research. It's a distinctive musty scent for the confident individual man with hints of ginger and musk. I have other products as well. Shampoo, deodorant spray and roll-on. Have you tested it, Clive? Well, why do you think I'm asking you to try it? Locked on to authority figures, sir. There's two of them. Leave it aboard in five seconds. Five. Four. Oh no, Captain! You put a tulip in your button hole! Yeah, yeah, I'm making an effort. Yeah. But to them it'll look like you're wearing a severed head! Oh, oh uh, good point. Um, are you sure that these are management, Jackson? <laughs> Just, uh, you know, they're not, they're not very big, are they? In fact, they look a bit runty. Oh, I think they're sweet. Ugliest plants I've ever seen. They're not flowering yet, sir. He can hear you. Ah, uh, um, uh, welcome to the uh, really invincible 3.2.8. Uh, I am Captain Gordon Taylor, but everyone just has to call me Flash Dance. No, <laughs> no, no, now, before we get it. down to the real reason you're all here, the cheese and wine, let's get the dull stuff out of the way. <laughs> um, uh, there have been some complaints that service hasn't been up to scratch. Calls haven't been answered, etc. <clears throat> have you staffing problems? Uh, I know from experience a happy crew is a happy ship. <laughs> uh, is it concerning wages? Uh, do your staff ha- have a union? It's very important. Unity is strength and all that. Yeah. I, I, I thought they were supposed to be talkative. They've just been uprooted, sir. They're in shock. Perhaps I should repot them. Uh, can I get you anything? Cut back some of those dead leaves. Baby <laughs> Right, uh, that's not English, is it? No, sir. Computer auto translate, please. <laughs> We get the gist of Annihilate. Yes, yes, turn off auto translate. Well, that's it. <laughs> I think, in the light of what they've told us, that we should skip talk of service issues and get straight on with the cheese and wine. Ease the situation with some old fashioned earth style hospitality. Are you mad, sir? They've just threatened to kill us. And I've just offered them a cheese and wine. One thing will cancel out the other. Their roots are spreading. I don't like the look of this. Don't worry, they just need to be looked after. 
Perhaps we should deadhead them. Good idea. What have you done? I was deadheading them. That's not deadheading! Look. Dead head. What's the problem? <laughs> Patterson, hand over your weapon. Sir, they were a threat. They just planned. I'm relieving you of your position. Hand over your weapon. Uh, they might not be dead, sir. Permission to take them to the lab for analysis? Um, analysis? You, you mean make them better? Uh, yes, sir. I'll help you. Right. You take that one and... Oh, I'll take uh, this one. Mm, they're, they are a little heavy. Oh, oh look. What? It's the room, is there? They've got to do the grazing in the floor! Oh! Oh! Look at all the little shoots! Oh, they're oh, oh. definitely not oh. dead, sir. The roots are... they're oh. sticking out any little holes. They're oh. spreading and... Oh, God knows how far they've spread through the inner workings of the... Listen! Listen! Sounds like the engine's failing. Do take quickly. Exactly. How far have these roots spread, Cry 55? Uh, I'd, I'd say right through the air conditioning vents, the plumbing, the cable casing, into the engine and the computer systems. These plants have, in effect, taken over the whole ship. Can I have my gun back, please, sir? Um, yes. Eat lead, Pansies! Security Officer Melissa Patterson is too late. The multiplying roots of call center management are slowly strangling the whole ship. Power supply is still operative, sir, but I'm afraid. Uh... No, no cappuccinos. What about lattes? No, I'm sorry. Damn this life! Oh, oh my foot! I... Get off me, sir! Sir, can you I think that this was the finest upgraded ship in the universe? No, it's little more than a, a trellis. Um, Secretaries, Jackson. Thanks, sir. Oh, oh that's better. Oh, communication from Earth, sir. From Earth? Well, that's working, is it? That's working fine, sir. Uh, Colonel Kingston Smith in Macclesfield HQ coming through on visual. Does he have to? I'm hardly ready and to... And he's live. Live? What? Normally there's, there's a six-month delay. Not since the upgrade. Oh, good Lord. Uh, right. Don't let on about the state of the negotiations. Flash dance! Is that you? Ha <laughs> ha, Kingston Smith. <laughs> uh, if you've rung to congratulate me on what the... What the uh... hell's going on? We're paralysed down here. They're not answering the phone. Right. Uh, did you get the message about the black hole? Flash dance! It's civil war down here! We need that call centre up and running! Have you spoken to them? I have spoken to them. We've put some points across. Uh, they've put some points across. I think we'll have the situation sorted out pretty soon. Make it fast, Flash dance! <laughs> Things are breaking down! Hey, uh, oh no! Uh, I've got to go! Who are you? Uh, ah, get off! Righto, Kingston Smith. <laughs> is that really Macclesfield he's talking about? It is, sir. What's throwing you, sir, is that it's on fire. Oh. Uh, we've lost contact, sir. I think they're in trouble. So are we. The power's failing. Everything's failing, even the oxygen system. What about the toaster? I'm not sure about the toaster. I'll check it. This is a disaster. All right, sir, I'll check the toaster. Then I'll check the oxygen. What should have been a simple job sorting out service issues has turned into a matter of life and death for the ship and for planet Earth. The pressure is on for scientist Clive 55 as he analyzes cuttings of pendula verbularis in the lab. Clive? Mm hmm? Why are you setting fire to their leaves? To see what happens. It proves that they're very much alive on account of how much they're writhing. Apparently, so they say, plants scream. Now, the human ear, you or I, can't hear it, but they say that a dog can. I can hear it. Can you? Yeah. You're quite loud, Clive. Is it? Clive, what have you got for me? Look. Clive, I've never liked torture and it doesn't help us. Exactly. I want these plants dead. No! Karen, we need decisive action. The toaster is toast. But it's not their fault. They were uprooted. 
All they're trying to do is re-establish themselves. Pass me those jars, will you please, sir? What are they? Well, various types of acid. Oh, I can't watch this. <laughs> oh. Karen? Carry on, Clive. Seven years of service are beginning to take their toll on Karen Trex. Stuart Jackson, taking time off from fixing the oxygen supply, pays her a surprise visit in her quarters. I'm on the toilet, Stuart! Right. How's the Star Constellation design seat? Oh, it's lovely, thanks. It feels really nice. Oh, flushes are working. Plants must have got to the plumbing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. At least my sound system's still working. Yeah, what is that? Whales mating. Oh, right. Whale song calms me down. I'd be a wreck otherwise. Sounds like my mum. Sorry? N not mating, singing. She, oh. she used to sing like that. She, she wasn't very good. Oh. But I miss her. Sounds. I'm so lucky to have my little orchids. They're like my family. It's the only real closeness you get on board, isn't it? Yeah, unless you count what happened in the black hole. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty intimate. Oh, weird. Oh, I know. <laughs> Yucky. <laughs> Actually, I quite liked it. I felt like we were so close, like yeah, Come touching. and meet the flowers. They're, they're just over here. Ah, right, this one I call Dad. This is Mum. Hiya, Mummy. This little old shriveled one is Auntie Sylvie. And here's the dog, Snuggles. <laughs> oh, I go mad without them. <laughs> yeah, why is that orchid there, old Auntie Sylvie? Why is she so shriveled? She's 82. You'd be shriveled, eh? No, I mean, the other orchids are flourishing, but she's on her last legs. Oh, well, the weeds got her a few weeks ago. They're always getting into the flower bed. It's a full time job cutting them back. They're really. Oh, my God! Weeds! Well, that must be tough. Yeah, chill out, Karen. Wee! Yeah, sing with the whales, Karen. Sing with the whales. No, no, Stuart. Mm. You accidentally beamed weeds from g -Fax. They've been strangling the pendularis. Quick, let's talk to Chloe. I know. What, what, you know they're weeds? Yes, sir. Why didn't you say? Well, I don't want to appear right all the time, sir. It's not good for your self-esteem. Anyway, I think I've found a weed killer. Oh, oh, oh that, that, that oh, smells sir. familiar. Isn't that your aftershave? Yes. I've discovered not only can it give a man a distinctive musky allure, it can also kill weeds. Look. Oh. And, oh. and because it's a liquid, we can inject it into the roots, they'll shrivel up, die, and relinquish their deadly hold on the ship. Kill the weeds! And I've also got jar loads of the stuff so Patterson can load it into a pato blaster. She can fire it over planet GFAX and liberate the pendula verbularis. Kill the weeds! All oh, right, Karen. And, and you'd still recommend this as an aftershave? I've also got it in a creamy balm for those with sensitive skin. Patterson? Yes, sir? It's the moment you've been waiting for. You're resigning, sir? Oh, far from it. Prepare your pato blaster rocket for launch. The time for chatting is over. No more polite banter, just action. My kind of orders, sir. Hold fire until Clive brings his aftershave. Bit confused by that order, sir. I love this teamwork stuff. All using our new things. Patterson's using her patter blaster. Jackson's got his tractor beam. Karen's used the toilet seat. Stuart. Great stuff. I've used my toaster. We're all doing wonderfully in our own particular areas. <laughs> Gives me a warm feeling in my tummy. Could just be trap wind, sir. Could be, but I, I don't think it is. Maybe... Maybe it was a bit. I am always right, sir. You are, Clive. I, I, I really think you are. The crew move fast. It's not long before the visiting plant life has been injected and destroyed. And the planet GFAX showered in aftershave. Right, just so I'm clear, all the weeds on the planet have been successfully wiped out. Yes, sir. And so has everything else. That's right. According to our analysis, the surface of the planet is a barren, lifeless wasteland. Ah. Clive, you said it was weed killer. But, I can't always be right, sir. But can't be silly. Besides, what is a weed? Is a weed a plant? I mean, one person's weed is another person's flower. Clive, you wanted us to put that stuff on our chins. <gasps> Ah! 
we've destroyed innocent life. Um. Here. Thanks. Oh, oh, hold that bullet, Karen. Uh, there's mail from home. Oh, as you were, Karen. It's for the captain. Oh, no. It's from Macclesfield HQ. Um, <clears throat> Patterson summarised it for me, gently. Well... Apparently, they've retaken control on Earth. Oh. They're rethinking the whole call centre strategy uh -huh. and probably moving the whole lot back to Bradford. So, it's good news. Well, they say we've broken interplanetary rules by destroying a planet. We've set back Earth's reputation by a generation. And as for your fleet commendation, you can whistle for it. Oh, well, uh, did they get my message about the black hole? Yes. Received your communication about being the first in history to go in a black hole and yes. come out again. And as far as we're concerned, you can bugger off back into it. Are you sure you don't want me to take over, sir? No, I wouldn't. As far as I'm concerned, this has not been a bad day at all, all things considered. We've done Earth a favour. People are talking to each other again and not to plants. If you've got problems, talk them through. Does that mean we can talk about the black hole? No, no, you are forbidden to so much as mention it. If I'd known that entering a black hole would have resulted in such frenzied weirdness, I'd never have gone into it. Mm, probably the, the high-density vortex somehow pushing our bodies Just together. Quiet, to quiet. Pulsating. A team relies on certain structures and disciplines. We have a long journey ahead, and we can't do that as a big, amorphous, pulsating jellyfish, even <sighs> if it does make us feel squidgy and warm. <sighs> Now, I think some music practice in my quarters tonight. No. Yes, civilized social interaction is what we all need. <clears throat> Eight o'clock sharp. Bring your instruments. No. Good. Right, everyone, ready? After three. One, two, three. Clive, if you'll take the lead tonight. Excuse me. It is clear that on crossing the event horizon into the black hole, the crew somehow morphed into one globular, pulsating mass. It is an experience they must try to forget. In the spaceship, Captain Gordon Taylor is played by James Fleet. Stuart Jackson by Paul Barnhill, Karen Trex by Rosie Cavaliero, Melissa Patterson by Emily Joyce, and Clive 55 by Neil Warhurst. The Pendula Verbularis is played by Anna Bengo, and the narrator is Nicholas Bolton. The spaceship is written by Paul Barnhill and Neil Warhurst, and is directed by Sally Avons. This week on the spaceship... Jackson, pull this lever for me. Good. That's working. In the year 2104, a Federation research cruiser was launched into space. Its mission, to seek out new life. Fitted with wall-to-wall -wall monitoring, every moment on board the really invincible 3 Macclesfield division has been transmitted back to Earth. What you're about to hear took place live a while ago. 70,000 light years from home. At the end of the last series, Captain Gordon Taylor became the first commander in history to lead his crew into a black hole. A few minutes later, they're back. Oh, oh, it's, it's, uh, anyone there? Oh, Karen. Are you, are you all right, Karen? Oh, I'm fine, sir. Oh. That's the spirit. I, I think we've come through in one piece. Oh, we're such a lucky ship, sir. Okay, people. Uh, let's be having you. I hope you get. Oh. I hope you get, Doctor. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. That, so that's what happens when you enter. Just try black. not to think about it, Clive. If you like. Patterson, come on, come on. Don't judge me. Okay, okay, okay. Put the gun down. It's, it's only me. Sir. Uh, come on, people. <laughs> Rise and shine. Oh. Jackson, for God's sake, cover yourself up. What the hell was that about? 
That was disgusting. Right, as your captain, I forbid anyone to talk about what just went on in there. Be thankful we're alive. Uh, a little embarrassed, uh, perhaps, but alive. <clears throat> Clive, stop thinking about it. Oh, oh, sorry, sir. Now, what we all need to do is get busy. We've a ship to run, doesn't there's, there's lots, lots to do. Uh, any suggestions? You're the captain, sir. Now, I'll go and check out the ship, sir. I'll see if anything works. Yes, good. Good idea. Good idea, Jackson. Good, good. We need things working. <clears throat> Come on, everyone. Get busy. Do something. Fan out. Episode 1. Hole. Tuesday, the 5th of April. After a thorough examination of the ship, Chief Engineer Stuart Jackson has good and bad news. So, only the toaster works? Yes, sir. Well... Huh. That's, that's, uh, that's great news. I, I love toaster. Uh, no, that's the bad news, sir. The only thing working is the toaster. Well, if that's the bad news, 